final, right? The final exam, like if you need to review it, then you have something to go by, okay? It's like, how did I do this again? What did I need to look for? And for some of you, this might be um, good to just hear again, right? So I'll, I'll, I'll label this tips to know about type B regressions. This is 48. There's a blank page there. Really, any page will do any blank page, but I think 48 is just before type B examples, so it's a good place for that. You want to you wanna determine the X scale. What, did it, what happened there? X scale, sorry. X scale. For the X scale, right, you got to uh, find the time for one cycle. If you have more than one cycle, right, If it ever comes to the point where you have more than one cycle, all you need to use uh, is this for, uh, formula, right? Use time divided by number of cycles. That would be the time for one cycle. Okay, that's what you need to make sure you understand. Example, if it's uh, four cycles, take 20 minutes, right? So if, let's say the question for whatever reason is, hey, it takes four rotations and 20 minutes. That's not good enough for us. We're going to go 20 minutes divided by four cycles. 20 divided by 4 is 5, right? So it would be 5 minutes per cycle. This is the period. Okay. So that's something that if it happens, you should be able to figure that out, right? Um, half cycle provided. Only a max and a min mentioned. Use period two x max minus x min to figure out the cycle. And I think it goes without saying that. Uh, X scale is always period divided by four, right? Like I, I hope I make that very clear here. That is still the same, but you need to find the period first and foremost. If you don't have the period, you can't find the X scale. So you need to make sure you understand that. Mm, is that everything? Yep, yeah, for this. So that's the, the first step, right? Not necessarily in that order, but it's definitely something you need to uh, account for, the X scale, the Y scale. Uh, I will say use the amplitude A, right, to jump. between min, mid, max, right? That's a good 
strategy. If y max and y min is given, use y mid is max plus min divided by 2, right? To find mid. That would be the case where you don't have an amplitude. Uh, I will also say that there are quite often many ways to get to your answer, guys. Uh, several, right? So I'm just giving you some tips. They should all jive. I remember, I don't know if you remember telling you before, everything is connected, right? Everything we do is connected. We just approach it from a different angle because uh, sometimes it's easier to do it a certain way, but really, regardless of how you approach it, you should come up with the same answer regardless. So you should be able to check your answer. Uh, this is everything adding up, right? Um, I think that's all I have to say for with Y scale. Uh, leave a little bit of space in case I have an aha moment later on. Uh, y scale. And then uh, starting point. Do I start at a max, mid, or min? You got to kind of go with what the question is trying to tell you. Do I start with a, at a max, mid, or min? Is it getting a little, I feel like my bulb is running out of juice, eh? It's getting darker. A starting point, right? Do I start max, mid, or min? Where do I start, right? Um, does it start at time equal to zero or times equal to four seconds, right? Like what, does it start at zero or not at zero, right? Quite often it doesn't start at zero. So you just have to go with the flow. We'll just say, hey, it's observed that at this time it's at the low point or at this time it's at the high point. Then that's what you start with, right? Not necessarily time is equal to zero. I just made some a bunch of notes as I was working through this. And I think this is all I have, guys. But this is basically in a nutshell, supposed to help you to one more time tackle type B scenarios. Okay. And let's put this uh, a little I want to put this to the test. Right? So we'll we'll go flip through some of the questions. Um Hoping, of course, you already did it, or some of them. Uh, and I won't go through the whole thing where I solved the whole question. I just, I just want you to set it up. And then I'll give you a mock quiz. I have another one. Are we good with this? Right. <clears throat> so I want you to go to page 51. Fifty one. It's that tsunami there. Tsunami question. So I want you to give it a try. Okay. Have your highlighters ready. Right, so we have a tidal wave. Let's see. Uh, rapid change of tide is a faster motion wave, fine wave, right? Uh, caused by an earthquake, the water first goes down. So maybe the context helps you which, which way are things going, right? First goes down, I'll highlight that from its normal level. The normal level would be the midline for us, right? Oh, it's frozen. Let it go. Let it go. Then it rises equal distance above its normal level. 
and finally returns to normal again. Okay. Um, the period is about 15 minutes. So that's a dead giveaway, right? We don't even have to figure that one out. Period is given. That's perfect. That will help us with our X scale. X scale is basically done, right? Suppose that the tsunami has an amplitude of 10 meters. Also a giveaway, right? It approaches the pier at Honolulu where the normal depth of water is 9 meters. Normal depth of water is 9 meters. I should tell you something in this context. And you should be able to transfer that over to um, your equation, right? So what do we have here? X scale, I would almost say, regardless of the question, just do this, right? We will go uh, 15 minutes divided by 4. Uh, and what do we have there? What is it? 3.75, right. Perfect. So that's what we're going to go up by on our X scale. Perfect. Uh, y scale. And I usually tend to do this for my Y scale. I like to just have the three lines there. And I know that my normal is 9 meters, right? Would that make sense to you that the 9 would go here? And amplitude is given. So I'm going to go from here minus 10, right? Amplitude is 10 meters, right? So I'm going to go minus 10 to go minus 1 here meters and I'm going to go plus 10 to go up to 19 right so boom there's your y scale done so amplitude is quite often the way to go right because they will kind of give you a hint where you start and then you go either up up or from the middle you go up and down okay so it says that where do we start we would probably first so the idea is that we start here, then we go down, back to the middle, up, and back to the middle, right? So it's a little different than what you're used to, but, uh, and what is the indication as to my time? What time would this whole thing start? It doesn't say anything. We're assuming that this is zero, right? Just before it starts, it's time zero. Um, so I ha how about I do this zero nine for this point, and then I add my uh, x scale, which is 3.75. So it'd be 3.75 uh, negative one. And then I add another 3.75. That'd be 7.5. Uh, 9, I add another 3.75, that would be what? Uh, can you help me out here? Is that 11.25? 3.75, 3 3.5 would be 8 plus 3 is 11. 11.25, right? Uh-huh. And then uh, another 3.75 that would get you to 15. Which makes sense, right? From the start to here, it's 15 minutes, right? And I didn't talk about it a whole lot, but this is a, like if you have three mids in a row, that would be considered a cycle for us too. Normally, we focus on max, max, min, min. But, but if you continued this, right? If you continue this, if you went back to the middle, you should also see a 15 minute difference between the lows, all right? You come up with that equation. I'm not going to do the rest. Stat, calc, sin reg. This is what I just want to focus on, coming up with these points, okay? Uh, the rest is, the key is posted. It's detailed. Just go look it up, right? It's still, from, uh, I moved it to yesterday's uh, posting. Let's keep going. One last go at it. Page 53. And then I will tell you where you can review all of the functions towards the end of the book. Can you come up with these points here? Anyways, let's see how you did. I wish this, this wouldn't have started at time zero, but it is what it is. Um, a mass is supported by a spring. You should recognize this type of question, right? It rests 0.5 meters above the tabletop. It's a resting point. That's like your median, right? 
Is it still frozen? No, we're good. Now the mass is pulled down 0.4, right? Pulled down 0.4 of a meter, then released at time zero. It gives you a couple of things. That's actually the starting point. And what is the pulling down? What would that represent on our sine wave? Right, like if you allow me, right? If this is your resting point, right? The mass is sitting there. You're pulling it down, right? So that means that it actually effectively gives you the amplitude, right? 0 0.4 pulling down. So that's your amplitude. That's the amplitude, okay? And starting time is zero. So it gives you two things, right? Uh, let's, let's figure this out. I know that this is 0 0.5. This is given, right? I'm going to use my amplitude, right? I'm going to subtract that amplitude to get the low point, which is 0 0.1. It's not negative. It's just 0 0.1, just above the table. I'm going to add an amplitude. Amplitude is your friend, right? And uh, there you have it, right? There's your Y scale taken care of, check, right? Y scale, check, right? The X scale, we're gonna have to figure out, we're gonna have to add a bit more. Uh, this uh, creates a periodic up and down motion called simple harmonic motion. It takes 1.2 seconds for the mass to return to the low position each time. So that right there is your period, right? I knew that already, Mr. Dirksen, why, uh, why making a big deal out of it? That's, that's just how I am. 1.2 uh, divided by 4, because that's my period. And that's 0 0.3. Uh, and what is that in? Just remember, in this case, it's seconds, right? Because you're dividing the seconds, the time, in 4. So we will be going up by 0.3 of a second. So that's check as well. So um, I kind of shouldn't have put it that far in. I'm going to move this a little bit. I'm starting here. At time zero, I'm at 0 0.1. This is my start. And where did I get that from? From the question. The question gave me that, that it's pulled down and then released, right? So the action starts here. I'm going to add 0.3 every time. So let's just finish this pattern, right? We know for sure that from start to back, being back to the low point, I know this is going to be 1.2, right? Because we start at 0, 1.2 is a full cycle. So you can kind of predict that already. And then this is 0 0.3, 0 0.5, okay? And this is 0 0.6, 0 0.9, and this is uh, 0 0.9, 0 0.5. You got to be very careful, right? It's, it feels like the numbers are all mixed up here. You just got to be careful, right? So here, 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 we have all uh, five points. Stat, calc, sin reg in this case. And you come up with your equation there, okay? And again, the, the, the T is online, okay? All right. I will give you one more, but before we do that, this is an old exam question. Uh, some of you probably tried it already. I inserted it last minute. Uh, the first thing I want you to make sure is to go to page 57, right? There's your test review, right? It goes all the way to the end. And I basically took a worksheet that's two pages and I just gave you one page for each question. So you have tons of space there. And this goes all the way to cubic, uh, exponential, everything is covered. Not not every everything, but if you kind of just review this, you should have a pretty good idea of what to expect for the test. Some of this is in multiple choice. So I'll ask you kind of like, what would be the domain and range? Uh, how many, right, how many x-intercepts could there be, stuff like that. 
doubling time, half-life, review that for exponential. You should remember that, right? Uh, by the way, I don't think I mentioned it, but doubling time is the time it takes for something to double. So, and you're like, duh, I know that. But it's every time. Let's say the doubling time is three hours. It means that every three hours, the population will double, okay? Half-life, if you find that time, it means that every... Let's say it's two hours. Every two hours, the population will go down to half of what it was before, right? So that's what we do there. So test review there. I'll post the key to that. When you go to the back, we go back to sinusoidal, right? So that's basically, that's going to be the heaviest one of them all. So, for example, once you get to 62, there is one of those uh, type B again, right? Where you need to figure out the sinusoidal function for that one. Okay, so before we go, one last go at it. Old exam question. Can you do it? Page 55. Page 55. All you need to do there is to come up with the equation. If you can do this one, uh, you are in good shape. If you can read this one right now and come up with the equation, notice that I, I will do the same on the test. I will give you a box to put in your points. Did I just tell you what's going to be on the test? Not really, right? No, no surprises. But uh, there will be a box. So you can do all the work outside if you want. No problem. Make sure you just transfer those points in here at the end. Okay? So read that. Do the same thing that I've been telling you all along. Follow those steps and see if you can come up with the... Okay. So there's a diagram and that it usually jives, right? It should, right? So you, you know that the diameter is 14. I don't know about you, but I right away come up with my amplitude, which is 14 divided by two, right? That's seven feet. That's important. Each paddle takes 90 seconds uh, to complete one revolution. That's period, right? Period is 90 seconds. Therefore, X scale is 90 divided by four. Uh, which is, you got to help me out there. Is it 17.5? Sorry, 22.5, 22.5. There we go. Uh, seconds. We got that figured out. We've got our amplitude, which is going to help you to jump, right? Uh, so I will do this. Our starting point is it says that after 10 seconds, we are at 11 feet above the water, at a maximum height of 11. So not only does it give us the starting time, it also gives us a starting height. So you should start up here. And this should be 11. I will use my amplitude, right, minus 7, right, to give me that, which is 4. Take another 7 away and get you to negative 3, right? So these are the three heights that it will jump in between. Perfect. So we start at, at 10, 11, and then we just keep adding the x scale to the x values, right? Um, so that would be 32.5, 4. This would be 55, negative 3. And this would be uh, 77.54. This would be 111. And check, right? It does take 90 seconds, which is what they were telling us, right? A full cycle is 90 seconds. So you should check. It should all jive, right? You got this, right? So, yeah, I would ask you to fill this in if I give you this on the test, okay? That way it's nice and easy for me to see if you got it right. Um, and there it is, right? And you should see, right? Max, mid, min, mid, max, right? You see that uh, progression there, that cycle. And then uh, you go stat, calc, synreg, and here I actually have the key in front of me. So 7 sine 0.0698x 
plus 0 0.87 plus 4. And now I could ask you a bunch of questions, right? Uh, once, I, once you have the equation. So as you can tell, we don't always start at time 0, but there is a starting point, right? You should, within the context, sometimes if, it, if, a, if a rock gets stuck on the tire, where would, where would it start? I don't even have to tell you that. Unless the question, of course, mentions something extra, but it, it would be starting at the bottom, right? You would start at the bottom. That's when the rock gets stuck, and then it keeps going up and down, right? So read the context. If it doesn't say a specific point, the assumption is it starts reading a context. It could be bottom, middle, or top, and usually it's time zero unless it says otherwise, right? I think that's it. That's all I have. Um, that is second period for you, right? Tomorrow. So you don't have to worry about a snowstorm or anything like that. And again, uh, all of these uh, questions we did today, the key is online. And you will notice that I don't necessarily follow the exact order that I gave you, right? I kind of I'm a little bit all over the place, but I do kind of try to figure out my X scale. I try to figure out my Y scale and then a starting point and I go from there to complete my cycle, all right? Oh, one last thing. Uh, I would like to address that because I feel like it's gonna bite us come exam review. Uh, you know when I give you the period is two pi A? I don't know if you remember that. I just remember eating pie, Mr. Dirksen. That's all. I want to eat pie. Um, is this this is, this might be the draft that's written on here? So this is the clean version here. So page eighteen. Yeah, that's where I put it down. I would like you to, I think I'm going to get you to scratch that. And maybe, I hope you understand, the only time this would be your period is if your, uh, if your x-axis would be the horizontal distance that tire traveled. But most of the time, it's time for us. So I don't want you to mix that up and think, oh, I can just get my period this way. If time is your x-axis, then this is not, this is totally not relevant in that case. So why don't we just uh, say goodbye to that one? Put it to rest, right? Let it rest, rest in peace. Um, and that's that. But if I ever tell you in a question, the period of this tire would be the circumference of it, right? Or how much it travels in one rotation, like the distance traveled, you would have to know, right, that I'm referring to this, right? The circumference, two pi r, which is two pi a. This is still true. This, this is true. This you can have in your, on your study sheet that the circumference is that, but not the period, right? I hope I made that clear.